So we're going to do another calculation with electromagnetic radiation and again I'm going to use a 410 nanometer wavelength purple light. The difference this time is I'm going to calculate the energy of that visible color um, that has a wavelength at 410 nanometers. So again the first thing I'm going to do is write down your given which is that we have a wavelength of 410 nanometers and since I know from the last time that I typically have to have all of my units in either meters, joules, or seconds. I'm just going to again convert my wavelength immediately into meters. And again, there are 1 billion nanometers in 1 meter. So my wavelength is actually 4.1 times 10 to the minus 7th of a meter. I'm trying to solve for energy this time, and typically we'll solve for in joules. But in this question, we are going to have to convert that to kilojoules. So we'll have a metric step at the end for this one. The next thing we're going to do is realize again that since we're talking about visible light, it's going to travel at the speed of light, and all electromagnetic radiation travels at 3 to the 8th meters per second. We again also have Planck's constant, which is 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34th joules times seconds. And again, that's where we're going to get our energy unit from, but we'll have to convert that into kilojoules at the end. Again, we have our typical equations that we had last time. So we have speed of light, lambda, and nu, which is wavelength and frequency. We've got this other equation where energy is related to Planck's constant and frequency. And if you put these two equations together, you can make a third equation so if you take these two and algebraically isolate it correctly, you will get a third equation, which is the one that we need, which is energy is proportional to Planck's constant speed of light over um, the wavelength. So that's the equation I'm going to use, and I don't have to isolate for any variables. So I can start putting in my numbers. So again, Planck's constant speed of light. and then all divided by the wavelength, which I have in meters, again, so that my units can cancel. So meters will cancel and seconds will cancel, so I will end up with the correct unit of joules. And just in case you have a different calculator than a typical um, TI-30, if you have a graphing calculator, the button pushing is a little bit different, so you have 6.626, you have to hit second comma to get that exponential notation and then negative 34 times 3, again, second comma, and then to the eighth for the speed of light. And then you're going to divide that by 4.1 to the exponent of negative 7, because that's the meters. And we get a very long answer on our calculator, 4.848. 2.9, I'm just going to stop writing there because I can't keep that many significant figures, to the negative 19th joules. But I'm going to convert that into kilojoules right away before I have my final answer. And so I want to go from joules to kilojoules. And again, the kilo is a larger unit. In one kilojoule, there are 1,000 joules. So what's going to happen is my you, my exponent is actually going to get even more negative, and I'm only going to keep two significant figures, so I'm going to do 4.8 times 10, and then you would divide this answer by 1,000, and you get to the negative 22 kilojoules as a final answer. With correct sig figs, exponential notation, and units.